Hey, welcome to How to Play, brought to you by The Games Capital. Today we're looking at a game called Monstrous. Now this game is all about Greek mythology. Uh, in the game, two to five players are going to be taking on the role of these Greek gods. And the setting is that men have lost faith in the gods. They no longer respect them. And so these gods are going to be unleashing monsters on these unsuspecting humans in order to restore their faith and respect. It's an interesting game. I've never played anything quite like it before. There's definitely an element of strategy in the game, but essentially it's a dexterity game. You're going to be throwing cards onto the table in order to interact with various locations and monsters that are already on the table. Quite different. Uh, before though we get into how it works, let's have a look at what's in the box. Okay, so basically this game is a card game, so it consists of a series of cards. First of all, we have these large size cards that represent the various locations in the game. Uh, and there are some quite well-known uh, Greek mythology places, such as Sparta and Mount Olympus and Argos, Thebes, and so on. So there's a whole bunch of those. Then each player will have a deck of cards, and these are the monsters that come into play. Every deck is identical. And the monsters themselves, the cards are double-sided and they have a different effect on each side and we'll go into that in a moment. So as well as that, uh, each player has a summary card which outlines what happens on a turn. So you have that in front of you. Also, you'll have a large summary card which tells you what all the locations do and on the reverse side what all the monsters do during the game. So you can keep that as a reference as well. Then the other thing that is included in the game are these little tokens that represent faith that you're going to be restoring in uh, the humans that you terrorize with these monsters. Basically they're victory point tokens and so you're going to earn those uh, to win the game. So that's basically all the components to Monstrous. Let's have a look now at how this game works. So to set the game up, the first thing you'll do is you'll take the location cards and you'll randomly choose five of those to be in play and then they're placed into the middle of the table. Generally you'll place one in the centre of the table and the other four will go uh, around the outside of that uh, cent central one. Leaving a bit of space, now I haven't got that set up here because I've limited in space, but generally middle of the table these five location cards are placed. Then each player will take a deck of uh, monster cards and depending on the number of players some cards are removed from the deck but each player will end up with an identical deck, so you'll remove the same cards randomly from each deck. Then you will shuffle your deck, draw three cards, your first three monsters, and then the game is set up and ready to go. So let's have a look at how it plays. Well, let's have a look for a moment at the powers that occur during this game, because the monsters themselves have powers and the locations have powers and depending on where they land as you throw them, these powers are triggered. So first of all, let's have a look at the monsters. Now I mentioned before that the monster cards are double-sided. On one side of the card is what's called a common power and all of the monsters share this same common power. And basically what that is, is when you throw this card, if it hits another monster, then you gain a faith. If it hits a location, then you also gain a faith. And as I say, every monster has that same common power. But on the reverse side, each monster has a unique power that's, that it, only it has. Uh, for example, here the Pegasus. When you throw Pegasus, if you miss a location, so if it lands on the table and doesn't touch one of these locations, then you get to throw it again, but only once per turn. Uh, the Hydra, for example, any monsters that you hit, get put back on top of their god's deck. So you could use this even to get your own monsters back into play. Uh, the dragon, for example, any monsters that you hit get completely discarded from the game and won't score at the end of the game. So each monster has this unique power and there's quite a number of different ones in play. As well as that, there are also some monsters, in fact three in each deck, that are referred to as trap monsters and they have this little red outline around their name. The trap monsters also do things when they're hit if they're in play. So for example, the Gorgon, if you happen to hit the Gorgon with one of your monsters, then that monster's immediately discarded. 
the siren. Um, when another player hits the siren, whoever owns that siren gains one faith. And the phoenix, uh, the phoenix, when it's hit, comes out of play and is put back on its god's deck. So those traps come into play as well during the game. So in addition to the monsters having powers, the locations themselves also have powers and they are triggered when a monster hits them. So for example, Corinth here, when it's hit, the player who's managed to hit it with their monster gets another throw, gets to throw another monster out and uh, try and do something with that. Athens, for example, when uh, a monster hits Athens, the player can either draw a card from their deck or gain one faith. So each of the locations also has powers, and depending on where things land, certain powers are triggered. Now there's an order to how this all works, and that comes into play next. So let's have a look at how a turn works. Okay, so the first thing that happens on a turn is you have to throw a monster. So from your three cards, three monsters that you have initially, you'll select one that you want to use, and you'll throw it onto the table. Now there are some rules as far as throwing is concerned. You're not allowed to throw from over the edge of the table. So you've got to keep your hand back behind the table in order to throw. You can't sort of lean over and try and land it that way. In fact, the rules suggest that you get rid of chairs, that everybody stands up, and you can move around the table to any position you want to throw from, but you've just got to throw from beyond the edge of the table. So you throw your card out, and hopefully it lands either on a monster or on a location in order to trigger some kind of event. So once you've thrown your card, the first thing that you need to look at, the second step, is to look for any traps. If you've landed on a monster that has a trap, then that is immediately triggered, and potentially that could be the end of the turn depending on what the trap is. This, in this case, no trap, so we move straight on to the third step, which is looking at monster powers. So you'll look at the power of the monster that you've just thrown and resolve that if you need to. So in this instance, Pegasus, the power is if I miss a location, then I get to throw Pegasus again. So in this case, I haven't missed, I've landed on a location, so the monster power is not triggered. The fourth step is the location power. So each of the locations has a power. In this case, with Corinth, when it's hit by a monster, I gain another throw. So that means in a moment I'll get to throw another monster as part of my turn. Then finally, the fifth step is the location's faith. Now each of the locations in the, each corner has a number. And that's how much faith you earn by landing a monster on that location. So with Corinth, it's one faith, so I would gain that and add it to my collection of faith. Then I would have my extra throw if I'd earned one, which I have in this case, so I would throw it and I would repeat the same process, looking for traps, then monster powers, then location powers. Then at the end of my turn, I draw another card, add it to my hand, and that is the end of the turn. So the game basically continues in that fashion until one player has used all of the monsters in their deck. Then each player gets one more turn and then you add up scores. Some end game uh, things might be triggered, which earn more points. Whoever has the most points is the winner. In summary, players are acting as Greek gods, sending monsters to bring the humans back in line. Each player sends monsters into play by throwing or flicking them onto the table. Actions occur when monsters hit other monsters or locations. During the game, players will receive faith tokens. Once one player has played all his monsters, the game is over, and the player with the most faith is the winner. So I found this game quite entertaining, probably because it's something very different to anything that I've ever played. Um, there's a bit of strategy involved. As the game progresses, there's going to be more and more monster cards out in play, and so you need to decide where you're trying to land your cards. So there's a bit of skill involved in throwing the cards. Sometimes you want to avoid certain cards. Other times you want to land on um, perhaps a big pile of monsters to earn points. It depends on the power that you're using. So there's a bit of skill, a bit of luck, a bit of fun. Great little game. Check out Monstrous. Thanks for watching. Happy gaming.